Hey everyone, welcome to Humble Tree Homestead. I am Danielle Carpino and we're very happy to have you here. We are in Washington State Zone 7 and this is our first year of in-ground gardening. We have done five years of container gardening up to this point, but we just moved this spring to the bottom unit which opened up ground space and allowed us the opportunity to have an in-ground garden. This is our little oasis and we're happy to have you here learning with us and growing with us so without any further ado we're going to go ahead and do our july 15th 2023 garden tour Row one, Pepper Isle, you know the drill. This is our two Shishido plants. As I had told you earlier, we harvested 11.69 ounces off of our Shishido plants, and we are eagerly awaiting to do the same again and have more blistered Shishidos because boy, oh boy, I wish I had a whole row of Shishidos. I love them that much. <laughs> but anyways, look at these plants. They are still just loaded with shishito peppers and they just like blooms are still setting on i'm really excited about this i really genuinely could probably have an entire row of shishitos and be completely happy with it moving right along to our california green bell pepper the sweet little runt of our family that I keep nurturing and keep hoping will grow someday, but he may just be the little guy in our, our garden that does nothing but provide beautiful green greenery and hope. <laughs> so anyways, um, he's growing. He's got some leaves on him, but I don't know if he's going to be fruitful. I don't know if he's going to grow a whole lot, but I'm not giving up hope on him. We're going to just continue and wait and see if it becomes the the green bell pepper of our dreams if not then we'll still love it all the same <laughs> but as you can tell it is significantly smaller so yeah our poor little guy Right along to the echinacea cone flower that we got going on here and let me tell you I enjoy this color in my garden and you can see that there are new buds that are beginning to form and enjoying in on the party here in our garden but man they're just so pretty look at them i love these i'm gonna definitely have to do more of these throughout next year because they're just beautiful and you, you can see they're loaded with little pollen and the bees love them and i they're just they're just beautiful that color is stunning moving along from the echinacea that brightens up my garden we have the sweet carlina that is correct. I got the name right this time, not Sweet Caroline like I've been calling it. Sweet Carolina pepper that is growing and it's taller than the rest of the peppers in the aisle. Not by a lot, but it is taller. So we go from the sweet little guy to big Sweet Carolina over here who is doing amazing things for us. This is going to be a sweet pepper. I can't remember what the characteristics were. I'll have to look that up and show you guys. We have beautiful peppers on this plant. Down here. So looking on the other side, you can see she is definitely doing great. Look at that gigantic pepper. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about this, but just big peppers on our sweet Carlina, which is extremely exciting and extremely welcome. And then there is our banana pepper. 
and as you can see it's growing amazing it has a lot more peppers on it the more that we look the more that we find throughout it's like a a little scavenger hunt with the plants and it's so much fun and I enjoy I enjoy going oh wait there's one oh look there's another one so here are our banana peppers that we will be turning into pepperoncinis doing amazing growing lots actually which we will be harvesting soon it looks like then we have the beautiful marigold which is a great pest deterrent brings in pollinators and in addition to that most people aren't aware but you can actually eat marigolds and make medicinal salves and things with it which we'll have coming up soon then we have the Thai basil plant that seemed like it wasn't going to do anything and now is doing well so this week we will be having ourselves some Thai beef salad. I will share that recipe with you guys. And then we have the lemon drop pepper. This is that first of the two spicy peppers that we have. As you can see, continuing to set blossoms. It has peppers throughout the whole plant. It's always hard to see when they're still green, but it's kind of a neat looking pepper. Kind of like flat and just, just shaped a little differently, but it's kind of cool. So got that one with all kinds of peppers all throughout. Then we got the beautiful trap crop of petunias, which keeps pests also away from your pepper plants. It'll act as a trap crop and they'll go to that versus the actual pepper plant itself. Then we have the Thai pepper over here. As you can see, it is growing. It's nice and thick. So if you move in closer, you'll see it has Thai peppers all throughout it. So it's doing great. It's continuing to set bloom. So my husband is definitely going to have a great harvest of his favorite pepper. <laughs> Moving along to our vining melon and cucumber and squash row. As you can see, it doesn't look as lush and full as it did last week, but there's actually a reason for that. As I saw only one cucumber on my plant and very little of the melons that had actually been pollinated, I thought, I need to evaluate what's going on here. So I sat back and I watched and I noticed that the bees and pollinators were only going to the blossoms that were on the outer part of it because it was so dense and so lush with vegetation and not going really into the plant and pollinating. And as you can see, it's not a matter of them not having blossoms on it, right? There are blossoms all throughout these plants. They're covered in blossoms. And that's why I really could not figure out why we weren't getting more than the one cucumber on it or the few melons. And so when I was evaluating and watching it and realizing what was actually happen happening, I thought, okay, Let's resolve this and we're going to cut off the vegetation because I, at this point I don't need the plant to grow. I need fruits and veggies to grow. And so I cut off a, a good portion of the vegetation and I still left some because you want leaves on there for photosynthesis of your plant. I wove all the like random loose parts in left um kind of a like every other leaf pattern going on so it provided both shade and leaves for photosynthesis 
and then also with the ones that I wove in, those are going to feel back in and give more leaves to this. But in the meantime, it allows those pollinators to get in to these vines and pollinate. And let me tell you, that was the best evaluation I could have done on these because what it did is it brought so many more pollinators into my garden and they were working the flowers like crazy. And I saw two bees fighting over one of the ones that had the female part on the end of it for my cucumber. So I know that it's working and I know that this was the best choice I could have made. So while aesthetically it's not as beautiful, full and lush as it once was, productivity wise, it's doing so much better for us and it's going to actually yield us a harvest where before it was only going to yield us a few things so as you can see i definitely thinned it out but it was beneficial and i would suggest that if you're noticing that you're not getting a lot on or you're getting a lot of things that don't seem pollinated i would strongly suggest even though it doesn't make for as beautiful of a plant especially with the vining up situation. I would suggest doing this because it was just so dense and those pollinators couldn't get in and they're doing great now. I would say that it was beneficial. This was my lesson. Thought I'd pass it along to you guys and just let you know in case you're running into this problem yourself how I troubleshooted it. It's again, when it comes to gardening, it's totally your style and totally what you want to do. But that's what I found to work for me. Moving right along to our sweet baby watermelon. That has a sweet baby watermelon growing on it. Welcome to the family. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and then we have blossoms throughout going up. As you can see, it is doing great. It is growing and reaching and meeting all kinds of milestones for being a little guy that came to our garden late. It's doing really well. <laughs> Moving along to our Petite de Grease melon. This is that melon that is going to be kind of like a cantaloupe. It's a French varietal that is very um, much caramel aspects to it, which I'm really looking forward to because I like some caramel. If you look closely, you can see fruit throughout this plant, but you don't have to look very close to see this bad boy. Look at him. He is a good sized melon here. I'll put my hand for reference. Very exciting to see this one. And I actually didn't see that melon until I pruned away some of the vegetation. And then that's whenever I saw that, that one alive and thriving. <laughs> Going around to the back, you will see our Arminian cucumber plant. Again, thinned it out. Pollinators are hitting it like crazy now. So I should be seeing more cucumbers because I have not been seeing cucumbers on here besides for this one. That's that one I showed you guys last week. It is growing. It is doing great. However, it was the only one that I had on there. So remember me telling you about the two bees that were fighting over the one female on our cucumber plant? Well, here you have it. This is the, the flower they were fighting over on the Arminian cucumber plant, which means it probably got pollinated, which I'm happy about because I really, really wanted to try the Arminian cucumber, but at least we got one. And with how productive this plant is, I would imagine we're gonna get more now that I've troubleshot the issue, hopefully. 
If not, well, we'll we'll have more lessons throughout the season, I guess. Next up is our Thelma Sanders. As you can see, it's doing really well. I did prune off some of its leaves because of the fact that they are extremely pokey and intruding into the walkways. So I pruned just a few of those back. They didn't really need to be opened up because as you can see, the blossoms are really large and the pollinators have no problem finding them. Right here we have one of the males. You can tell that because it's got the pollinated stamen on the inside of it. Um, but those are very easy for the pollinators to see. I'm not really having any problems with that. The problem I was having at first was just not having male and females at the same time on here, but that has kind of seemed to resolve itself and we have both kind of forming on them. Right here, you can see a female one that is about ready to open up and give us another acorn squash. This, or not acorn squash. Well, it is an acorn squash. It's a Thelma Sanders acorn squash and that I can hopefully hand pollinate. Again, like I said, we've got lots of male and female. Here is the one that got pollinated, but I was just going to say that, but it looks like, or that I thought got pollinated, but it looks like it did not. And I, the reason I was just saying that is if you look right here, see how it's rotted at the end. It's starting to rot away, how it kind of went from being the shape it was supposed to be to kind of shriveling up. So apparently my hand pollination wasn't even enough for this. So I'm not really sure what happened here. Um, I will have to kind of play with this, figure out if I can see what happened, but I'm bummed to see that that fell off. But when I looked over at it, I thought, hmm, I think this one's not going to do well. That's what I was just going to tell you. I was going to lift it up and say that I thought got pollinated, but then I could see that there was blossom and rot on it. And you know, one thing that might have happened is I felt like the blossom fell off of it too fast and I wonder if it needs to stay on there to kind of keep fertilizing the the actual uh, fruit. No. What could have happened that I was, why I've been kind of watching this one is I did notice that the blossom fell off really, really early after it got pollinated and I'm wondering if it needs to stay on there a little bit longer in order for the vegetable to become fertilized. So I'm not really sure what happened here, but that's kind of my hypothesis. I'm gonna kind of keep evaluating with these other ones and see what's going on. But that would be my guess is that that blossom fell off before the, the plant was completely fertilized. So luckily we have more that are getting ready to open and everything and we have uh, male and female plants. So hopefully we'll see some Thelma Sanders coming on. I'm bummed to see this, but like I said, I kind of was honestly wondering if it was going to happen whenever I first noticed that it wasn't really growing anymore. It was seeming kind of more shriveled. And then I noticed right now when I came out that that end looked like it was starting to rot and I barely moved it and it popped off. So bummer, but they're all lessons in this garden and helping me to learn. Next up is our squash and zucchini that are being trained up the post and the tomatillo row will come on down. Plants doing great. We have male and female throughout it and look at that this is our ron day day nice again don't have a stutter that's how you say it <laughs> but this is our first one as you can see it is starting to get very good size this is going to be a smaller squash but it is supposed to be like really good for stuffing and you can see that one definitely got pollinated it's doing really well and we have one over here as well that's starting to form. We've got blossoms that have been opening up, male and female parts on this plant. So this is going to be doing well. When we got our rain this week, I noticed that this plant and the other one were starting to fall over 
from the weight of the water and the plant itself. So I ended up switching from using gardener's tape to using the zip ties to help hold the plant up so that it gave it more stability. And it's been doing great since then. So I'm glad that I made that choice, but um, I did start off with gardener's tape, but it just, it, it's, it get, has too much give and it needs structure when you're training a plant that normally goes on the ground to go up. So we're gonna come on down to our Black Beauty Zucchini, which has both male and female parts back there that are starting to set on. We'll be getting some more vegetation soon. And if you look down here, we have our Black Beauty Zucchini that is growing and doing really well. Let me get the flower out of the way for you guys so you can see it. We have that wonderful zucchini. Now, let me tell you something. Zucchini, while you can let it get big, I prefer it when it's probably an inch, maybe two inches longer than that. I don't like them to be extremely big because when you start running into them being bigger, they are a lot harder of a like rind on them. The seeds are a lot more prevalent. Whereas when you do it like this size, a little bit bigger than this size, it is really tender and I love it that way. So I'm, I'm going to be picking this one pretty soon. It probably won't be on there by the next garden tour. So while we only have one on here, I'm not too concerned about it because the plant itself is showing male and female parts that are going to be opening up. And I know that we got a later start to our garden, so I'm pretty sure that that's why it only has one at the time. But it's going to be starting to produce pretty well because there's quite a few different male and female parts within there. Moving along, we have Alyssum. And our salvia that's been blooming, the pollinators like that. Chives, more alyssum. Our green tomatillo that is, in fact, getting tomatillos growing on it like I suspected it would do. I was starting to see little signs up like this of tomatillos coming on. So this one, while it was a little bit later to produce tomatillos, I have a feeling it's going to do really well for us so i'm not too concerned about the late start as you can see this is just a taller growing plant than the purple one it's almost up to where the trellises are and it's well above my head so while this one was a little bit later i'm not too concerned about it i think it's just one that grows taller than you know the purple variety and because of that it kind of took a little bit of time to get the tomatillos going on it but now they're they're growing and i'm excited about that so i can make my own salsa verde for my beef that i make and we got another one right there i just think tomatillos are such a neat plant they're so cool looking then we move along to the purple one that is more bushy so you can kind of see like let me show you the comparativeness this is the purple that's the green one see how how different they grow which you would think a tomatillo is a tomatillo but they are such different plants we have bushier denser one versus one that's just tall and doing its own thing growing growing up this is going to be a tomatillo tree before the season's over the route that we're going because man it's it's just huge and then you can go on down i'll show you guys the the inside of here like I usually do every week. You can see this husk has opened up, which means that once the sun starts to hit it, it's going to turn that purple color. You can see it's already starting to kind of turn darker there, which once it turns purple, then it'll be ready. But this is definitely not going to be a shortage of tomatillos all throughout here. We just got tomatillos growing like crazy and like i was saying i just love the way this plant looks i think it's so incredibly neat looking i saw something over here where the tomatillo um the husk is growing on top of the tomatillo don't know what happened there i'll have to find out for you guys <laughs> how funny but 
we've got lots lots and lots of tomatillos that are coming on and lots and lots of blossoms that are still continuing so the last two rows guys we have the tomato row i'm gonna come in here i see that there is a sucker growing in the armpit i'm gonna pick that off because remember i prune mine so as you can see they are they're doing good um some have exceeded the trellis which it'll just fall over kind of like my other trellis things have but that shade cloth even though it's off right now we'll put it back on after my video it has been really helping it has been high 90s all week long and we have had no blossoms falling off we're continuing to see new onset of fruit which like i told you before at 90 degrees and above consistently to, uh, tomatoes will go sterile and drop their blossoms and that is why we i'm weaving this in right now guys sorry <laughs> just training it to do what i want it to do we um put the shade cloth on and as you can see it's doing great we're still getting new fruit it's keeping it cool enough in there so that those blossoms aren't falling off and this is our peach tomato as you can see lots of fruit on it this is going to be a fun variety it's supposed to be kind of a yellow peachy tone and it will have little tiny fuzzes on the skin so we thought that would just be kind of a fun one to try and just see what it was about just we like different varieties of things and and trying things that we can't just find in the store and get around here but as you can see new fruit is setting on even though we've been in the high temperatures blossoms are continuing as well next up let me prune or not prune let me train this one through the trellis this is our kellogg breakfast i finally got that figured out which one this was i found my notes that's what happened guys i found my notes and now i can tell you the correct one so this is the kellogg breakfast and you can see it get these it gets these cute little like uh sunflowery clustery kind of blossoms again blossoms aren't falling off doing great continuing to set fruit new fruit on here if you come down here, you'll see that all of those have new fruit in it. And then we have the tomato plant itself on both sides. I'll show you both sides of it. But it will go around to the back side after I do this. But you can just see our tomato plants are doing great, even though it's hot. Continuing to blossom, continuing to do well for us. Got another one that needs to be trained in. See, once that shade cloth comes off, I can see, okay, this one needs to be tucked in. This one needs to be tucked out <laughs> to prune it and train them where I want them to go. Okay, next one up is our sweet Virginia plant. And this one has fruit right there. Oh, this one was actually part of the sweet Virginia. I noticed whenever I looked at the things new fruit coming on doing great for us as well that was not a heavy producer but i have a feeling it will get to the point where it starts to produce because it's, it's it's just slower than the other plants then we have the early girl which has um blossoms that are setting on and if you come on down with me you can see clusters of the early girl. This is going to be a red tomato. That's supposed to be good producing tomato. So that's that's what we got. We got some good clusters, good growth on those. They're doing great. Then we have the Prudence Purple or Cherokee Purple. And this one's just been doing phenomenal for us. You can see this big bad boy on here lots of new growth lots of little ones coming on again i think the leaf pattern on this one is just so neat looking like you have your lacy you have your lacy leaves that are typical tomato leaves and then this 
Pruden's purple or Cherokee purple just has such a different leaf pattern and it looks really cool. It looks like a house plant outside. <laughs> so as you see up here, this one looks like it kind of died off. So I'll just plick it off so that it's not taking nutrients from the plant. But as you can see, we have ones that are still putting on fruit, blossoms still opening up. This plant is doing really good for us. It's reached the top, as you can see over here. I'm gonna just train it to go the way I want it to. Moving along to our Sweet Millions Cherry Tomato that I'm just kind of not really pruning this one. I'm just letting it do its own thing. They're going to be a smaller branch. They're going to be smaller blossoms, things like that. I'm not really overly concerned about the size of this one. It's at the end of the aisle. But as you can see, we still have blossoms that are coming on. And if you come with me down here, you're going to see all of those cute little cherry tomatoes that are starting to form come down we have more over here that are coming on and then as you travel down you can see we've been snacking on them we got our first cherry tomatoes off about two days ago there's more that are ready to come but they were so good so sweet reminds me of childhood my grandparents always grew cherry tomatoes and so the flavor of cherry tomatoes and just that pop and that that juicy explosion just really reminds me of being over at their house as a kid and it's just really really reminiscent of childhood moving along you can see that our ground cover our borage our pollinator and pest deterrents our cyan basil the lavender is starting to grow again this is all doing really good filling in looking beautiful basil same with the back we got basil a little uh, volunteer marigold, some borage growing, chives, it's all doing really good. I'm going to show you guys the back side of the tomato plants. So as you can see, producing on all sides of the plants. Last but definitely not least, we have our sauce tomato row. As you can see, it has exceeded the trellis, continuing to grow and is doing very good. We're continuing to see blossoms coming on. This, the first two are the Corday Boo. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it. So as you can see, still producing, still doing really well. Great looking plant. We have lots of blossoms, lots of new fruit that's setting on. Now I wanted to show you this. See that? That's called blossom end rot. That can be caused by two things. That's caused by a calcium deficiency, which we're gonna get a fertilizer this week to put on our tomatoes or it can also be that that one did not get pollinated so we're going to kind of keep an eye on it i'm going to put on i that's the only one that i'm seeing so i'm guessing that it's a pollination issue because there's only one that's doing it not other fruit along this plant so my guess is is that it didn't actually get pollinated properly and that's why it's doing that but we will fertilize it and we'll keep an eye on the other plants but as you can see, like none of the other ones have it on them. 
but I wanted to point that out to you that that is either blossom end rot or improper pollination. But since it's only on one, I'm really guessing it's probably a pollination issue on it. But I wanted to show you, aren't these the cutest tomatoes? To me, they just look like little pumpkins sitting there. I think they're so cute. That's that Corde Blue, which is going to be a sauce, a sauce varietal. I have two of those growing. More blossoms that are setting on. More growth new fruit coming down and then we're starting into the San Marzinos which are a great sauce tomato they're used a lot in France and Italy in their sauces because they have a lower water content more meaty and so you don't have to boil off as much water on it and just very flavorful you'll see down here which I'll show you the back side again. We got tomatoes that are just... Our tomatoes are popping, man. <laughs> and then we have one of my favorite ones to look at. The yellow pear tomato, which is going to be a smaller variety, kind of like a cherry tomato. But it's pear-shaped and they will get yellow. But isn't that just cute? Oh, it reminds me of things like fairies and just mystical little creatures and I just think it is the most adorable and whimsical little plant. It just makes me happy to look at those. They're so cute. So I'm going to show you guys the back side of my sauce row. There you have it friends, our 2023 week number three garden tour. As you can see, gardens change quickly. I am blown away every time I go out there, every time I go to record one of these videos and I look back and see how much things have changed on the previous weeks, it just blows my mind. So this week we did pull in our first substantial harvest of shishito peppers it was 11.69 ounces and i blistered those suckers up and made a tahine aioli and it was delicious it was so good nothing beats that like literally going and picking it out of the garden and cooking it immediately the taste is 
out of this world and it was so good. If you're interested in learning how to make that, I have it in short form video on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, all Humble Tree Homestead. So you can find us across all social, social medias that way. Um, I hope that you guys have a really blessed week. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and drop a comment down below. We really look forward to kind of growing this community and seeing you on the regular here and look forward to these weekly garden tours with you and just taking you along our journey and our learning process and really hope that you guys enjoy it. Until next week, just remember that humble beginnings grow mighty things if we tend to them. I love you guys. Have a good one.